May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Good morning and welcome to worship. You might notice I am not in the sanctuary on this day. However, I am like most of you, I suspect. I was just ready to get out and to take some deep breaths and to feel and to be in God's good creation. And so this morning, we are worshiping from our backyard and we still welcome all who are visiting via social media and we pray that whether we are in the confines of our church building or whether we are out in God's nature that you enjoy worshiping with us this day and always know Eastminster is a wonderful place to call home and we welcome you to come and to visit us physically when we are all able to do that. There are uh, prayer requests that will be sent to our members via email, but just know that we take prayer seriously. And if you have a request, please send that to our email address at the church, and we will include that as part of our time of prayer. Also, know that uh, our reentry task force has been working uh, behind the scenes to help us get a plan uh, when that time comes when we can re-enter into our worship. But you know what? Worshiping right here in this way is pretty wonderful. And so let us listen now to this beautiful psalm as we are called to worship. Clap your hands, all your people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all of the earth. God has gone up with a shout, and the Lord has gone with the sound of a trumpet. So sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is king of all of the earth, and so sing to him with a psalm. God is king over all of the nations because God sits on his holy throne. Together, may we give thanksgiving to God this and every day. Let us worship.
we look around us at the world, at our nation, our local communities, our families, and we acknowledge the presence of conflict, pain, and suffering. May we ask for forgiveness when we fail to reach out in the name of our Lord, offering restoration and healing to God's world and God's people. Lord, hear our prayer. Forgive us when we accept the blessings of life while neglecting to serve as our Lord served, with unconditional love, humility, and compassion. Forgive us where we are weak and when we fail, and empower us with your spirit to be strong, yet gentle bearers of your love and compassion through our words, our actions, and our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We can cast all our anxiety on God, who cares for us deeply, and we can be assured that the Spirit of God is resting upon us, restoring, supporting, strengthening us with all power. Our good news, in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. We prepare to hear today's scripture by opening our hearts to the Spirit in prayer. Guide us, Lord, in the direction you would have us go. Illumine our hearts with a deeper awareness of your precious word and give us the grace to love you more and serve you better in the place where you have placed us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's epistle reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers.
gospel lesson this morning is from the 17th chapter of John, the first 11 verses. Listen now for the word of the Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know him, the one and only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me. And so now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made known your name to those whom you gave me from this world. They are yours and you gave them to me, and I have kept your word. Now they know everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you have given me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and they know the truth that I come from you, and that you have believed, and they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking now on their behalf, and I'm not asking on behalf, of the world but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they're yours all mine are yours and all yours are mine and I have been glorified in them and now I am no longer in the world but they are in the world and I I am coming to you Holy Father protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The grass withers, the flowers fade, the word of our Lord last forever. Thanks be to God. So, here is an oldie, but a goodie. A story is told about a man who was stranded on a desert island alone for many years. And when he was finally rescued, the captain of the ship asked him about three huts that were on the island. The man said that the first hut was his home, and well, the second hut, that was his church. And so the captain asked him, well, what about the third hut? What is that? To which the man replied, oh, pff, that's the church I used to attend. You know, my itch to have and to do and to be immediately has not been fully scratched. But have you noticed that our world of instant has shifted? We no longer have what we want right at our fingertips. We are more isolated. 
And you know, I am trying to embrace that kind of peace and I'm praying that it is a peace that will last. Obviously, our deserted island friend has yet to learn patience, even with himself. In a world that revolves around me, it is so easy to pick up and to move on without doing the hard work of wading through our differences. Often we ignore those differences as gifts of the Spirit, like those varied functions of our body working together for the good of the whole. Our world, and yes, even our churches, they are filled with a third hut kind of mindset. The reality, however, is at some point in life, we cannot survive alone and we were not created to survive as deserted island dwellers. And there is another reality check. Unity for self takes hard work. And thanks be to God, we have one of the best working partners that has been gifted to us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And you know, Eastminster continues to be a congregation that is embracing the power of the Spirit by continually praying and listening and discerning what God wants us to do and who God wants us to be. We have broken out of those molds that often confine ministry instead of expanding it. We love our tradition as we should, but more and more we are, as Jesus would say to Peter, getting out of the boat and we are casting our nets further and wider. But no matter what new and yes, sometimes risky ministry offering we bring as a way of thanksgiving at the heart of what God calls us to be as a church is to be in faithful worship and study in fellowship, in mission, in outreach. And why? Well, because in a word, community. Community is the key to worship and fellowship and education and outreach and mission. God's word continually calls us to build up one another and to build up the body of Christ, the church. It is community that I am craving right now, as I know so many of you are. Restrictions are loosening, and for that, I am grateful. I am so looking forward to seeing you face to face again. There is, however, one scriptural reminder that just seems to keep popping up at every turn I take. To be gathered in worship as the one body of Christ is our calling, and it is also our calling as the one body of Christ when we are scattered to be witnesses in Rockwall, in Forney, in Rowlett, in Plano. And thanks be to technology even beyond what we could have imagined, but God already knew. The work of the Lord by the power of the Spirit has not stopped and neither can we. Our challenge in this time is to be intentional about offering and participating in all of the wonderful opportunities that we have before us and to continue to encourage one another in community. It is a challenge, honestly, that's always been before us, but perhaps right now you and I are seeing that a little more clearly. We have to be intentional about continuing to be witnesses beyond our own four walls more now than ever. But you know what? Here is the good news of the day and of all days. Building up community is a high priority on Jesus. In fact, Jesus spent most of his earthly days building up a community of people who would know him and who would know God even better. And building up a community of people who would carry on his mission long after he had gone. And you know, we are blessed by a manual of operation and inspiration. It is the life 
of Jesus, complete with all of these incredible examples of how we can be community one to another. Our scripture lesson this morning is Jesus' prayer for the community that he is about to leave behind. He has told his disciples that he will soon be killed and yet he will be raised again. He will ascend into heaven, but he will send a whole, the Holy Spirit, an advocate, a helper to help and encourage them. And then he turns from them and he turns toward his heavenly father and he begins praying for his disciples. He gives thanksgiving to God for this gift of a deeper relationship that the disciples have with their creator. He prays for God's presence in their lives even as they continue in his absence to carry on the work to others. He prays that even in the differences of this kind of ragtag group, that they will be one, just as he and God are one. He prays for unity through him. This unity, it is a gift from Jesus for all who believe and call him Lord of their lives. Unfortunately, not all persons make the most of this gift and even more unfortunate there are many who won't even unwrap this present jesus knew and jesus knows this he is aware that in spite of his pleading prayer for oneness there are disagreements and divisions that not only hurt the world they hurt the church and i fear that if we, members of the body of Christ, wherever that may be, are not intentional about embracing this gift of unity, that something even like our re-entering guidelines for worship could become contentious. For me, this message from Acts and from John is timely. And it reminds me that we are to be the kind of witnesses to the oneness of Jesus and God, not only within the confines of the building, but most certainly beyond them. Our calling does not stop because we cannot meet one another face to face. And you know, even in the midst of this pandemic and the fear that it engenders, you and I as members of the body of Christ are called to practice intentional mutual forbearance, not just for self, but for other followers of Christ and for the good of all of God's created world. There is an Alban Institute that points out the fact that churches will indeed have disagreements. We're human. But the fateful question is how will we handle them? Churches, like families and like other groups that gather together, we need to find ways to deal constructively with disunity and with conflict because face it, churches are arguing and have been arguing since the beginning of time just look at Peter and Paul. But you know what, Christ Church, it's still here. Each of us rightly has a choice to make about our own opinions and the right to express those opinions. Unfortunately, often those rights become fire starters instead of prayer and conversation starters for the building up of one another and the building up of Christ Church. Disagreements on matters of faith in church were so prevalent that we have a confession that addresses the issue. It's the second Helvetic confession. And it goes like this. There have, at times, been great contentions in the church. And the most excellent of teachers, they even dis, dis, differed among themselves about important matters, but meanwhile, never ceasing to be the church because of these contentions. For thus it pleases God to use the dissensions that arise in the church to the glory of his name, 
to illustrate the truth and in order that those who are in the right might be manifest. There are two things that stand out in that confession to me. We can disagree and yet not cease to be the church. And then God uses our disagreements to lead us to the truth, to God's truth. And speaking of truth, bearing one another is harder work, I think, than going and trying to build a third hut. And you know, after all, what becomes of a bunch of third huts that have been abandoned? They serve no purpose. Division is part of who we are and so we own it. But that division is not the end of the story. Jesus' prayer points us to a deeper uni unity amidst our disagreements and our divisions. We are all children of God. That is our first and our deepest connection. And then as Presbyterians, we acknowledge and we embrace Jesus as head of the church. We are part of Christ's church, important each one of us, but we're still just parts. It is our unity in Jesus that makes the whole body function and unity in Christ that makes us function faithfully, even with all of our differences. And so not only can we be united in our beliefs, we can be united in our living out those beliefs. Jesus tells the disciples and he tells us that our work is to reveal God to the world. And you know, some churches are better at some parts of that work than others, but all of us share that same mission to make God known in this world. And in an ever-changing world, I am so proud of Eastminster for stepping out in faith, for casting a net sometimes on the other side in so many ways. Think about it. The Eastminster Christmas Village was a dream. And then the Spirit told us it was the Lord's work. And in 2020, we will celebrate seven years the neighborhood breakfast was a tug and a pull on the heart. The Spirit told us it was the Lord's work. And we would have celebrated six years, minus COVID-19. But you know, if these ministries or any other of the countless ministries that we have here at Eastminster, if they are no longer the Lord's timely work, then the Spirit the Spirit will direct us in new ways, and I am confident that through praying and listening and discerning, the work of the Lord will continue right here under the roof of one hut, this hut, because the unity of Christ is the foundation upon which we are built. Theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said this, a Christian must accept his or her responsibility as a citizen of this world where God has placed him or her. We cannot withdraw from the world as tempting as that might be. We cannot ignore God's call in the world, revealing God's presence and working for peace and justice and inviting others into relationship with the living Lord. And I will add to that today. We cannot ignore God's call to be gathered in worship in one hut called the body of Christ. This pandemic has, I think, for a time pitted these two callings against one another, being in the church, being out of the church. And it has the potential to encourage hut hopping. If we do not open the church in the ways that people desire it to be reopened, or if we open up in strange and unusual ways, then hut hunting season could be open. And then from hut hunting goes hunt hut hopping. You know, I know I'm being silly, but here's the bottom line. A community of faith united with Jesus of our as our foundation, tells us that we 
should work hard to maintain maintain the hut in which we have been called to be disciples whether that be in the walls or beyond them through human wisdom and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit we are charged with not allowing the world to separate the Lord's work in either place the church or the world our common calling is to be the body of Christ and to build up the community in every place and every way and every day and that is a gift given to us by our Lord I pray that we will unwrap and embrace that gift called unity because beneath under all of those disagreements and divisions and dissension rest God's deeper unity for us because we have one Lord one faith one baptism one God and Father of all so Thanks be to God the Father who created us, to God the Son who prays for us, and to God the Holy Spirit who moves us all toward greater unity. Amen. Believing that from the creation of the world we were loved and surrounded by the presence of God, may we no less believe that this very day and every day, God is still with us. Thanks be to our living Lord and the Holy Spirit. Please join me as we affirm this truth. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of the God, Father Almighty. From this we shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. we are gathered in a building or whether we are out in God's wonderful creation we can be assured that our prayers are not only lifted up they are listened to by our Lord and so together let us join our hearts in prayer eternal God we come before you a bit shaky some days the world is so much with us that we lose our focus and our center our attentions become scattered, our perspective skewed, and our vision diminished. And so come to us and heal us. Heal us so that where we have lost our way or where we have compromised our integrity, you might restore us to better behavior. And heal us so that when we lose ourself in rage over that which cannot be controlled, we learn to let go and come to a quiet acceptance. And heal us so that when we lose sight of whose we are, we may know once again that we are embraced by you in Jesus Christ. And heal us so that when we feel alienated from others, we may reach out to embrace and to be embraced by your Christian community and know we have a spiritual home with our fellow seekers. And heal us so that when we fail to fulfill the mission to which you have called us, you may refocus us on those values and treasures that are eternal in times of joy may we rejoice and in times of sorrow and pain for others may we support and reach out to them in times of conflict may we be understanding and we pray that you will guide us as we make our claims on today and on tomorrow may we have long arms with a long reach to include the least of your children throughout the earth, as did our Lord, in whose name we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to this time of returning thanksgiving to God, hear these words. We rejoice in our hearts for that gift we call eternal life through our resurrected and our ascending Lord. And in that rejoicing, we bring forth our own gifts of hope and of promise, trusting them to God's care and to God's goodness. May we receive God's tithes and our offerings. With a spirit of joy, we offer our thanksgiving for the ways the Lord will guide us in stewardship. Creator God, we know that you have made everything in this world. 
You have been so generous to us every day. We pray that this church will show our generosity in giving back to you what is already yours. Amen. And now as we prepare to go from the places from which we have gathered in worship, hear these words. Go now in peace for Christ has called us to live in harmony among our brothers and sisters in Christ and all of God's people. Go now in courage for Christ has called us from all the places of our lives to be agents of redemption and partners in healing. Go now in joy and thanksgiving, for Christ is our light. And go now as one body to love and serve God, even as we love and serve the world. And may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Thank you.